Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, brother Ray Tar. It's always the hour for revival. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, hide me behind the cross. A little bit of me, but all of you, spit of these of the clay. Everybody leave here singing. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Mark 1. 29 through 34, the Lord done changed the direction I was going to a different direction, but that's all right. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 1, 29 through 34, and there's been so much technical difficulty with this video, but I know that that's all right. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll read all comments at the end of the video. Thank you, Jesus. Now... As soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Bless God. When you don't have the answer... I know somebody who does, amen? When the doctor's done said it's too late for a miracle, I'm telling you, my God still works miracles. Let me tell you, you've come too late in the game to tell me, my God, don't heal. He does heal. He does do miracles still. He's still the way maker and the problem solver, amen? Thank you, Jesus. So he came and took her by the hand. Thank you, Jesus. And lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her. And she served them. Hallelujah. I know one president one time said, Don't ask what you can do, uh, don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Don't ask what your God can do for you, but what can you do for your God? I'm going to turn the table right there. Thank you, Jesus, and I'm going to entitle this message today, Heaven's Gonna Make a House Call. Heaven's Gonna Make a House Call. Thank you, Jesus. There's no light coming into this house except a supernatural light. Thank you, Jesus, because there's no light outside right now. It's dark and the, the, uh, the sun's not in the sky right now. It's stormy and dark, but thank God that there's a God in 2018 going into 2019 that's capable of doing everything far above anything we could ever ask or think. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Verse 32, And at evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And there and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa, glory to God. What am I saying right there? What I'm saying is they brought them at the darkest hour when the sun had set. When the doctor said it's done too late for a miracle. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The sun doesn't set, but God, the sun, said I'm going to put light in their darkness. Hallelujah, Jesus. What did he say when he said, I'm going to put light? He was saying, I'm going to give him a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. He is the light of the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this is blessing somebody this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven's going to make a house call. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is actually not the message, the uh, scripture I was going to use this morning, but the Lord Change the direction, and I'm glad he did. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just like any good doctor does, the great physician still makes house calls. Amen. We see over and over in Scripture where he went out into the houses of people doing good works of the Father. Amen. Healing those who were sick and oppressed by demons. Amen. 
healing the leper and the lame. Thank you, Jesus. He is the great physician. Thank you, Jesus. And the great physician, no matter your condition, is going to heal your sick body, deliver you from oppression and, and every demonic attack, every tormenting spirit is going to have to loose you today and let you go free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I know there's a brother watching right now that God healed of a stroke when he was watching the video about a month ago. God healed that brother. God is still a miracle working God and what's impossible to man is not impossible with God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He is still the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's still the miracle working Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, I'm excited that his blood gives us redemption. His blood gives us deliverance, but his blood gives us healing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Dr. Jesus is going to make a house call today. We see over and over, like I said, him going into other houses through the scripture, doing good deeds of the Father, doing miracles. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And like any good doctor does, the great physician is always prepared for any emergency. There is no condition too great for the great physician. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Daughter said, you're going to die and not live. Jesus said, you're going to live and not die. God's going to give you a second opinion. Thank you, Jesus. Any good daughter will tell you to go get a second opinion. Amen. Go to Acts 20 and verse 8 and 9. Acts 20 verses 8 and 9. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together and in a window sat a certain young man named Atticus who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. Now, there's a problem right there. He died. Now, some people say, that's it. Call in the time of death. Let's write it down. But as soon as the enemy's already as well as wrote your death certificate, God is going to give you a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Let me explain something by the Holy Ghost today. Thank you, Jesus. Not only will God give you a miracle, He'll give you mercy in the midst of your madness. Amen. It was chaotic when that brother died. But look at this. Do you know what his name meant? Check this out. Atticus. His name meant fortunate one. <laughs> I laughed when I read that. His name meant fortunate one. In Greek, his name means fortunate one. He was fortunate that there was a man of God in the house that knew how to get a hold of God. Thank you, Jesus. When everybody said it's too late, the Bible says... If there be any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church to anoint him with oil. And if there be any sins that he committed, they will be forgiven him, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The word save is sozo, meaning completely lacking nothing. Bless the Lord. Ooh, I'm hot in the glory today. It's cold outside and cold in this room and no insulation, but Lord, I'm hot in the glory. Thank you, Jesus. 
like I said, Acts 20, 8 and 9. Chapter 20, verses 8 and 9. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. L notice that. There were many lamps in the window, in the upper room where they were gathered together. And at the window, a certain young man named Atticus, who was sinking into a deep sleep, he was overcome by sleep, and Paul continued speaking. He fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. There's many people. The light is around them. Bless the Lord. But they're too asleep to pay attention to the light. Light literally moths to a flame. Many are drawn to the word. But not everybody can take heed of the word. They can't accept the word. They, they are drawn to it, but they, they, they don't get in deep enough to have the flesh destroyed and the glory lifted upon their life, uh, the glory put upon their life. Amen? Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. But he was sitting in a window how many today are in and out of their mentality of the Christian faith? Their lamps going dim. You know, there's a lot of lamps going out in the church right now. The saints are going home, but their, their mantles will live on though they go to glory. But what I'm saying, there is lamps going out in the spirit because the hour is late. Lamps can't keep burning forever. They go out eventually. And God has to have somebody else come light another lamp. Thank you, Jesus. He is the lamp lighter. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. There's lamps, saints going home that had their vessel full of oil and they was burning for God. And then they, they finish their race and God said, it's all right, it's time to come home. And it takes them home. Thank you, Jesus. But this young man fell into a deep sleep. There's a deep sleep coming upon the church. Just like with the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. Oh, wait a minute. Bible said five took a lamp, but took no oil with them. Matthew 24, 1 through 10, I believe it is, or 25, 1 through 10. They had a vessel, a form of godliness, but they denied the power. They didn't have no oil. Thank you, Jesus. But the Bible said both fell asleep. Both the ones that was ready and the ones that wouldn't fell asleep. But then, as they were snoozing, they heard a a shout, a cry saying, The bridegroom's coming! Go ye out to meet him! God's needing his people to wake up. That's why I shout like I do. I want the clarion call to be brought out to all. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Cry loud and spare not. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But verse 10, but Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and they were not a little comforted. They were very comforted. But also I want you to know something. God's going to make your enemy uncomfortable. The very ones that wanted to see you dead are going to see you raised up in the righteousness of Almighty God. It's going to make the devil very uncomfortable to see God raise you up from that dead situation. Thank you, Jesus. 
no matter how dead the situation looks, God is going to raise you up. Somebody needed to hear that. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me now. Let me, let me say this real quick. So many times the upper room has turned into an emergency room. You might have found yourself on the top of truce trauma unit with your faith barely holding on to life support. Just hold on. They might send you home to die and life flight you out spiritually. But I'm here to tell you in 2018, I serve a God that's capable of doing more abundantly, more than you would ever ask or think. I know I said that earlier. I'm trying to tell you. He's still the same God he was yesterday, today, and forever. He's still the miracle-working Messiah. He's still God in flesh, and he still is with us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How can I say that? Because we are seated with him in heavenly places. So if we're seated with him in heavenly places, then I already know I'm with the Lord. The Bible says that, you know, uh, that to die in this body is to be present with the Lord. In my spirit, I'm present with him already, but my body is keeping me here at the same time because I'm not always staying in a heavenly place. I'm having to come. I'm always sitting with him in heavenly places, but what I'm saying is in my numerous trips to heaven, I always come back to this earth. Absent from this body will be present with the Lord, but present in this body is absent from the Lord. We're not all the time there in his uh, glorious apparel uh, seeing him. Thank you, Jesus. But we are always with him, and he is always with us. We are in the Father, and the Father's in us. Just as he was in the Son, he's also in us today. And God's going to do a miracle for you. Bless the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Ghost, today. A lot of people, there's a lot of people that fight God about coming to his house. And, and they fight him about, oh God, if you'd only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Oh, my sister wouldn't have had this accident. Oh Lord, where were you at when I needed you? He said, I'm still right here, baby. I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. He said, my word is yea and amen. He said, did I not tell you? He told Mary. He said, did I not tell you, Mary, that if you would believe, you would see the salvation of the Lord. You would see the hand of God move in that present dead situation. You would see life come back. Glory, hallelujah. Heaven's going to make a house call. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When man sends you home to die, you need to know this. God is still in the miracle working business. Isaiah 38, 1 through 5 talks about, and for sake of time, I'm just going to leave that as a reference. You can go back to it. Where it said, well, let's go now. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah, thank you, Jesus. 38, 1 through 5. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. And he said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I've walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. But wait a minute, if God told him to get his house in order, there must have been something in his house that was out of order. Because God don't tell no lies. Amen. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, let the sick say I am healed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless God. 
Let the sick say, I am healed. And said, remember now, O oh Lord. Amen. Verse 4. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go to tell Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of, of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will add to your day fifteen years. God rhymed right there. I love that the Lord rhymes. Amen. <laughs> Bless God. If you can't shout along with what I'm saying, son, your amen button's done been broke. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. He said, whose report shall we believe? Isaiah 53 and 1. And who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? God's going to do a miracle for you right now that only he can do. Amen. I believe it's in Jeremiah where he said, Curse is any man who trusts in flesh for his right arm. This is the arm of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. God's saying, you're either going to trust me for your miracle or you're not going to have any help. It's not the doctors that heal you. If God decides, it's God who heals through the doctors. But it's Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. God will meet you where your faith is. Amen. My great grandmother had a was a wonderful prayer warrior of the gospel of faith, and she was praying when her lungs collapsed, and they were gonna reinflate her lungs. They said we're gonna put you under anesthesia. She said, "All I need to do, baby, is look at King Jesus, and He's already in the room with me now." Thank you, Jesus. And she looked up and cried and looked up and rejoiced, amen, and they said that they inflated her lungs with no anesthesia, and she was looking up as if she saw somebody and was talking to them. God is going to give a house call today. If you can't get to God, honey, God will get to you, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just like the people in the upper room, Amen. But not just the brother in Acts. Not just like Peter's mother-in-law. Thank you, Jesus. But just like when Jesus was preaching. Oh, Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. In Luke 5, verse 17 through 25, we know that God was in a man's house preaching and the people couldn't get to him. The common folk couldn't get to him because everybody who was in the world was crowding him. The Bible said they let down the roof and they came through the roof to get his miracle. If you are determined to get your miracle no matter what it is, just like the Seraphonician woman that came to Jesus, Lord have mercy. Oh, Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. Just like the Seraphonician woman, she said, I'm not getting a no, I'm going to get a yes, because I believe what you said, that whoever comes to you, you'll by no means cast out. I declare your word for my life, and she refused to get a no from the lips of God. She said, I don't care what you say, what you don't say, I'm going to get my miracle because you're God, and you're God all by yourself. When you determine who you're serving, when you believe what you say, and say what you believe, God's going to give you a miracle and you're going to receive it, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. One more scripture. Go with me right now to the book of First Kings. First Kings. 15, uh, 17 through 1 Kings 17, 17 through 18. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who had owned the house became sick and his sickness was too serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, 
What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? So many people blame God when their miracle seems to have died. When their promise from God seems to have died, well, Lord, I must have done something to you or you must be punishing me for something I was doing or thinking about doing. So, Lord, this must be your hand in this situation. But I'm here to tell you, God is going to bring life to a dead situation. Come on, somebody. Whoa, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, this message is good. No wonder the enemy fought it so hard this morning. I mean, I, I had to restart about four or five times this video. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19, and, and he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the up room, amen, where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Thank God for the upper room, amen. There's something about an upper room miracle. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. What happened to the disciples? They were waiting in the upper room to receive fire. But let me tell you, the tongues like fire came upon them. Let me tell you, they were waiting in the upper room for a miracle. God gave them a new breath the breath of eternal life came into them. They were no longer on spiritual life support. Now they were living by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Henry Kidd done died a long time ago. This is Jesus alive in me. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I hope somebody feels the Holy Ghost today. He's here. This is a mighty anointed message of the Holy Ghost today. Thank you, Jesus. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son? So many times people think God has done something wrong, but God is a good God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. We live in a fractured creation, a fallen world. That's why bad things happen to God's people sometimes. And an unjust scale, remember this, an unjust scale is an abomination unto the Lord. God will always settle the balance, amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord. This child's soul come back to him. Let this child's soul come back to him, amen? And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room. Wait, 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 wait. Verse 22. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord is in your mouth is the truth. So many times it takes God moving in an impossible situation, though he already promised it to you. It takes him moving a second time to prove to a lot of people that he's still God. Amen. Like the man he had to touch a second time with the blinded eyes. Amen. Sometimes the Lord knows you just need a second diagnosis. Sometimes the Lord need, knows you just need a second touch. Amen. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for this awesome word this morning. But Isaiah said, Whose report shall you believe? Isaiah 53 and 1. I shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. And I'm 
Getting ready to close in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. It's a short message with a powerful word today. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, a, a, a soldier, a man of the world. A Gentile came pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, deadly tormented. Heal him. The centurion answered and said, Wait, 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 wait. Definitely, de dreadfully tormented. Verse 7, And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. Do you know why the centurion didn't want God in his house? One, because he believed that God could just do it by saying the word. But also I believe, I feel an angel of fire standing by my right side. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. He had idols in his house. His house, say, was not in order. Are you hearing me now? The, the man's house was not in order. So he didn't want Jesus to come into a house that wasn't in order. But Lord have mercy if you'll let heaven make a house call today. There's a healing of the heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Like the man whose son was sent to Jesus. He said, I believe, helpest thou my unbelief. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, there is one more scripture. Go with me to Mark chapter 5, verse 35 through 41, and I'm closing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher and any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Now, if you realize this, it was the same roster as the ones who went in with him to Peter's mother-in-law. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God just needs a few good men to agree with him. You know, just like any good doctor does, he sits around and, and you know, asks, you know, do you agree with me? Do you concur, doctor? See, you know, he said, you will say unto me the old scripture, physician, heal thyself. Your faith has the power in God to heal you. But you know what? Whose report will we believe? Dr. Jesus says some, and he's saying, are you going to agree with me? Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God, I love this message. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commun why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. There's also, that's right, there is also the same people that was at the Mount of Transfiguration. These same people that Jesus keep, kept chosen were those he knew who would stay with him. He wanted to get somebody who he knew had enough faith to stand with him. 
Now, he's God and God all by himself. But let me tell you, he sent them out two by two. Why? Because if two or more touch and agree, believing on any one thing, I am there in the midst of them. Thank you, Jesus. When he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child's not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithia Kumai, which is translated, that's the best I can do, <laughs> little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given to her to eat. You know what a daughter wants you to do after you've had a bad sickness? Go and eat. They want you to eat. They want you to get your strength back. But if, if Jesus said she was not dead, I believe it. But he said, go and get her something to eat. It's possible she could have lapped into what we call a present-day coma. Somebody might have a spiritually comatose situation right now, but God is going to bring a miracle to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad God kept the lightning away because there was lightning earlier today right before I got ready to preach. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. They ridiculed him. They laughed at him. They tried to put God to shame. But my friends, let me tell you, the devil's dumb. He don't understand this. Do not mock God. Amen? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he shall reap. Thank you, Jesus. Remember when the man brought his son to Jesus, he said, I believe, helpest thou my unbelief? God healed that man of two things, a spirit of unbelief. And he healed him of a wounded heart. Thank you, Jesus. He had all but given up hope, just like the woman who, with the issue of blood. Doctors gave up on her. They done stole all her money, done treated her bad. Said, oh, your money's gone. You might as well just go home and die, honey. We ain't got no use for you now. We done bled you dry. The woman had an issue of blood, got bled dry by doctors. Said, go home and die. We give up. We done stole all your money. Go home and die, honey. But Jesus, she heard he was passing by. Let me tell you, Jesus done heart surgery in the Bible, eye surgery in the Bible, open blinded eyes from birth. Thank you, Jesus. He healed the leper and the lame and the maimed, the maimed, the Bible says, but the maimed were those without limbs. Supernaturally, limbs grew in people's body. Grew on people's body. The leper, he healed the leper. The leper had no body parts. Arms grew back. Fingers grew back. God is still the God of the Bible. The same God in 2017 is the same God of 2018. The same God of 2018 is the same God of 2019. He don't change. Sometimes we end up changing, but God never does. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm preaching today. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm done. With the script, that, that's, that's all I was supposed to read right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this. You might not have the blue cross. You might not have the red cross, but honey, you have the rugged cross. Thank you, Jesus. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Maybe you've been misdiagnosed like the little girl in Mark. They thought she was dead. Jesus said, she ain't dead. She's just asleep. She's in a coma. But I'm going to come raise her up. Thank you, Jesus. No sickness 
is too great for the great physician to heal. I don't care how close to dying you are. You might be in the final stages of death, total organ failure. Jesus can walk right in that room and say, Death, I rebuke you. And death have to back off and take its hands off of you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still the God that healeth thee. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. And I'm here to tell you, if all hope seems lost, don't feel down, don't feel discouraged. Heaven's getting ready to make another house call. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. They are sleeping. That's right. <clears throat> Praise God. I tell you, I don't believe the little girl was dead. I believe that she was asleep. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe she had waited on the Lord and fell asleep. But what I'm saying is when your life looks like it's come to its end, when it looks like you've done been given up to die, maybe there's no signs of life in you. I'm here to tell you, God is going to do a miracle for you today. Thank you, Jesus. But the, the little girl got up to the point and she, she ate. God gave her strength in her body again. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I don't know what your situation is. Today, your situation, you might be spiritually dead, physically dead, mentally dead. I don't know. Your, your, your mind might be asleep today. Your heart might be asleep. But just like that man who fell asleep in the upper room and fell to his death, God shall provide for you. He will revive you again today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, you remember... Um, the woman with the child that died, Elijah went and laid down upon him and prayed. Thank you, Jesus. I think Elisha did the same kind of miracle and breathed upon the child and the breath came back in the child. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to give you supernatural breath today. He's going to let you live. You will live and not die in Jesus' name today. Amen. I'm speaking life to you. Right now, spiritually, physically, financially, anything you need, God's going to do it today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. With a long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Your grandchild might be sick and in a coma. Your grandchild might be, your grandchild might need a miracle. Here to tell you today, God's going to heal that grandbaby. Thank you, Jesus. Don't quit praying, Grandma. Thank you, Jesus. Grandma's prayers are powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, I prayed for a dear sister in Christ who's a dear friend of mine on Facebook. Her grandbaby was in a coma. Daughters gave him up for dead. We prayed, and Jesus... Brought that baby up from the dead. I remember what they said about that child that he rose up and said, Look, Papa, I see Jesus at the bed. I never will forget that. Lord, have mercy. I curse every devil of infirmity in Jesus' name. Let, let's uh, pray the prayer of salvation real quick. Maybe your loved one's in the hospital and they said, the doctor said they won't recover, but Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will give you the miracle you need. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. 
I come to you a sinner. I ask you to wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, I put my life in your hands, and I believe in your finished work. I trust you, Jesus, now and forever with my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I believe you died on the cross, that God raised you from the dead, Lord Jesus, and I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Oh, what an awesome message. What an awesome message this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I curse every devil of symptom, every sickness, every disease, every mental trouble, every anxiety in Jesus' name. I curse it at the root in Jesus' name. I command to dry up and die in Jesus' name, but you to live and not die. I command healing for the mind, healing for the spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There was a brother watching earlier who Jesus healed of a stroke. While we were preaching, Jesus healed him up, raised him up out of his sick bed. There was a, a, a young child about two months ago whose mother was watching with the baby in her arms, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus healed that baby of malaria. That baby was in that mother's arms and the mother was watching this program. And Jesus healed that baby of malaria. They gave the report that the child had been raised up from death's door. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Lord. I'm going to pray right now for those bound up in their mind, those who are addicted to things. Right now, I do declare a creative miracle in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, you are healed. In Jesus' name, according to Nahum 1, 9, the attack cannot come back. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord, for healing every mental trouble right now in Jesus' name, delivering people in their mind, every emotional issue, every mental issue, every trauma, I commanded to go in the name of Jesus. Right now, by your stripes, I command them be healed who are watching in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for creative miracles for everybody, Lord. In Jesus' name. You remember I said Grandma's prayers are powerful? Let me tell you, do you know what the difference between a bulldog and a grandma and a mama who pray and love Jesus is? Lipstick. That's it. They are bulldogs of the faith. Thank you, Jesus. When they pray... In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, devil. Arr, arr, arr. I mean the teeth and snarling and the sweats are flowing. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. A grandma who prays in the spirit and loves Jesus, nothing more than a, uh, you know, what I'm saying is, they're like a bulldog in the spirit, what I'm saying. They, they fight the fight of faith out. Thank you, Jesus. The difference between a bulldog and a grandma who loves Jesus, lipstick. That's it. They get violent with the devil. The kingdom of heaven suffer violent, and the violent take it by force. It's time we get back to getting violent with the spiritual things. Time we come in by force and take back what the devil stole from us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't stop praying, Grandma. Don't stop praying, Grandpa. Don't stop praying. Uncle, don't stop praying, Aunt. Don't stop praying, Brother. Don't stop praying, Sister. Your prayers are reaching heaven. And just like in Revelation, your prayers have reached a tipping point. And right now, they're about to tip over and pour back into your life. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost... 
and in fire. I love this prayer right here. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rasha Karoshandarabasato. Jesus do it now. Rasha Karabakasata Roshanarabasa. Rema Mahataka. Reha Mamatata Shekedebosa. Reda Rabaha Shaka Robosoto Robo Shande. In Jesus' name, fire, 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 in Jesus' name. God is going to raise you up. Amen. Washing the water of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. What an awesome message this morning from the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Everybody, thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. Write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N O Y 617 gmail.com. Kid Henry, K I D D H E N O Y 617 gmail.com. If you feel led to give, your gift helps me keep going around the world preaching the gospel, but it'll also help me go into other nations and preach and into other states to preach the gospel. Amen. If you feel led to give, I have PayPal. The link will be at the top of the video for those on Facebook, the bottom of the video for those on YouTube. Thank you for those who support this ministry. Your support helps us keep coming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless everybody, Lord. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother Ray Char, and it's always the hour for revival. I'll see you in the next meeting, or I'll see you in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.